Good morning. I'm just sat here watching the birds on this beautiful Wednesday morning. It's raining. You can hear that. But the birds are in such a frenzy, feeding, calling out to each other and even singing. There's a little bit of song going on out there. It's that beautiful time of year because Imak has begun. The first day of spring was on Monday. Spring here in the west of Ireland comes in about a month earlier than many parts of Europe. And of course, there's more light here in the evening because this is the most westerly part of Europe and the sun sets in the west. So, good morning. There's some flowers coming out on the rhododendron. That's the little bed that I planted up last year. And there's heathers underneath it. It's going to be a beautiful, glorious splash of pink. Very, very soon. And you can just see the buds on the ribes here. Just beginning to thicken. And of course, before the leaves come out, the flowers do. So that's just going to be another beautiful splash of colour here in the woodland gardens. So I'm just here on the veranda of the studio. And this is where I have my little clotheslines. There's a lot of leaves have built up over here, look, on the roof. I'll have to clean those off. There's always little jobs to be done here. So I moved the bird table. I <coughs> moved it from around the front. And um, it's just there, by the laurel arch. And you can also see the little glass terrarium and I put some food in that some of the smaller birds can just about get in and out of that the birds are very hungry now at this time of year
Yes, it's a very wet day. But there's a lovely stillness in it, and it's not cold. Well, this is the evening on the day that it rained all day. I've lit the stove and the cottage is warm. And I was thinking about the times that we're in. And I've got my, my latest book here, Walking Between Worlds. And I thought I'd read you the second but last chapter in the book. I think it's very pertinent for the times that we find ourselves in. So, it's called The Fairy Faith. Remember, remember when you were young let your heart be light. Laugh and find the joy within. That was written by Hugh O'Neill. And now, by this time in the story of the weaving, you understand why this belief in the other world is often referred to as the fairy face. For more millennia than we will ever recall, the peoples of the earth have lived within nature and held deep beliefs that have been a tightly woven part of their story. Much of what was experienced by ordinary people has been inexplicable in terms of rational substance. Long after Christianity came to these shores, People continued to live within the domain of nature, moving about their daily tasks that were seasonal and cyclical within the Celtic calendar. This way of life took into account much of the old ways and, indeed, what is referred to as the old religion or fairy faith. Festivals, superstitions, sayings, lore and cures were woven into the everyday lives of ordinary people, particularly those who resided in the countryside. For so many generations, the lives of the people have been closely intertwined with Mother Earth through this way of living betwixt and between. Belief in the she has gifted a softness and gentleness of character to the Celtic peoples. Love of music and dancing, storytelling and a powerful optimism of nature that has all combined to help us endure the vagaries of what is often the harsh world of man. Centuries of clinging onto the very edge of empires that have risen amid great turbulence and fallen into violent and oft-timed dark endings. Through much upheaval as the world revolves in time, the fairy faith and belief in the experiences of 
the thin times has helped build resilience in the people of Ireland. The linear aspect of the man-made world has been reflected in the belief system of empires that have come and gone. Through all of this, the Celtic understanding of time itself has been one of a cyclical and circular nature. It is the rhythm of return. And what returns cannot be finished or diminished. It simply waits for the energy to fuel its movement into being. This is the ultimate fairy faith. That they have always been with us and among us and have held tight to the land and the ability to weave in and out of the lives of man and his domain. All the while as guardians of the great goddess herself, Mother Earth. It is a fact that for many centuries we Irish have believed in the existence of the she and lived with the legends and superstitions to such an extent that our everyday life is intermingled with experiences of the other world. This in turn has been accepted as part of our spiritual life. Take, for example, the story of the first president of Ireland, Douglas Hyde, who admitted seeing a strange horse run round a seven-acre field and change into a woman. Douglas Ross Hyde, known as a Croven Eoven, was an Irish academic, linguist, scholar of the Irish language, politician and diplomat who served as the first President of Ireland from June 1938 to June 1945. Then there was the wife of the first Taoiseach, Eamon de Valera, Sinead, who was a renowned expert on the subject and it was on her instigation that he established the Folklore Commission to research the phenomenon. The commission was responsible for the collection and preservation of Irish folk tradition of all forms with the additional tasks of cataloguing the material under classification, their study and exposition. James Hamilton Delargy founded the Folklore of Ireland Society and its journal in 1927, prescribing guidelines for gathered oral tradition, for example insisting that the collected data identified the informant's name and age as well as provenance of material. And so we've kept the fairy faith. Because faith is something that is deeply held. That has no logic or rhyme or reason. But it's almost something that we innately understand and hold on to. And feel not the urge to explain. Blessings to you all on this beautiful Wednesday evening.